But there are certain things in this dream that pull us away from the silence and stillness. And there are certain things that lead us to it. And that's what spiritual practice is. They're things that lead us to the silence and stillness of our true nature. kind of hear how the the mantra goes inner and becomes more silent, becomes quieter and quieter and quieter all the time, more and more silent until it's only happening in the mind and then it's not happening at all. There's just the silence. Now, it may appear while I'm appearing to be chanting while there's a body that's appearing to be chanting whether playing the harmonium or or chanting without it it may appear that there's a body chanting and there is a body chanting but inside it's a completely different experience there's no body there's no chanting there's just the silence the whole time that you were hearing the chanting inside here there was just silence. There appeared to be chanting, the body appeared to be chanting, appeared to be making sound, but inside there was just silence. There was no chanting. There was no Rama, no Ram, no Sita. There was just silence. There was no person chanting, no Chaitanya chanting just silence and that's the bliss that's the bliss that's the bliss that a mantra practice can eventually lead you to but at that point the mantra stops there's no mantra there's no bhakti there's no no chanting to someone no person that's chanting there's just the silence the all-pervading silence of being, the fundamental nature of reality. That's all there is. That's all there's ever been. So the, ch the body chants. Yes, the body goes on in the dream. It's, it's remarkable that when we wake up from the dream, unlike our sleeping dreams, the dream continues. The dream keeps going. The body keeps going. 
the mind goes, you know, there may be thoughts or whatever in the mind. But the experience is of the stillness that's not the dream. That remains. That remains. In my experience, the, the, for it began with what we sometimes refer to as nirvikalpa samadhi. Nirvikalpa samadhi is uh, when the dream disappears. There's no body, mind, thoughts, world, nothing. There's just what we call the self or God. That's all there is. Just this silence and stillness and bliss of this. Nothing else exists. And then, because there's a transition to come back into the dream from this, which means that, you know, we, we leave the silence and stillness of, and come back into the dream. Whether we come back into a personal identity or whether that's gone or not, there's still the dream. And there's a little bit of a, a difference, a little bit of a, a contrast. But eventually that smooths out into what we call Sahaja Samadhi, where the dream goes on, as it is, the body does whatever it does, the mind does whatever it does, it has nothing to do with us. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to say, because it has nothing to do with us. I'm trying to explain that while the chanting was going on, the silence and stillness of this true nature, the fundamental nature of reality just continued, as it always does. It always does, whether we're aware of it or not, it's always continuing as it is eternally. And that's, that's the bliss. It's not the bliss from the chant. It's not the bliss from chanting. It's not the bliss from what the body's doing or the mind's doing. It has nothing to do with it. The bliss comes from our true nature, from the nature of what we are. That's the bliss. That's the bliss. That's what we are. And so it appears certainly from the outside as if here's a person who's chanting and chanting words and, and Rama and, and that's causing the, the bliss, but it's not. The bliss is always here. It doesn't have anything to do with what the body does or what the mind does or anything that happens in the world. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. To our true nature, that's just a dream. It has nothing to do with Reality has nothing to do with what we are. So the body chants. Why? I guess it likes to. <laughs> it's not my business what the body does. It goes on by itself. The dream goes on by itself. It's not my business if the mind is thinking. It usually isn't. But if it does, if any attention goes to that, it's not my attention. My attention remains as what I am, as my true nature. This is what awakening is. And there's different stages and steps to, to how we experience this. But one of the things that I had done before awakening was kirtan and the mantra practice and, and very intense bhakti, love of God absolutely complete surrender to God. All those things were part of my practice. Practice as, as a person. And the awakening shows that that never existed. <laughs> there never was a person to practice, to do practice, to have bhakti, to have experiences of bliss or awakening or whatever was going on. There never was a person to have any of that. There was only ever this. This is not the dream. This is what it's like to awaken from the dream. So the mantra practice sort of points to that in a way, doesn't it? You can see I'm doing the harmonium and chanting, singing, and then that slows down and there's just, in this case, Ram, Hari Ram, Sita Ram, Hari Ram, Sita Ram, Hari. And it gets quieter and quieter until it's just a whisper, Hari Ram, Sita Ram. Hari Ram, Sita Ram. And then eventually it goes internally and there's the body's not doing anything actively. The mind and the body are one. So the mind is continuing. The mind is continuing with the chant. And then that slows down. It may take weeks 
of doing the chanting to experience this, but that's okay. Practice is a practice. And then eventually we come into this, that all of it stops. And there's just the silence and stillness of our true nature, which has nothing to do with the dream, nothing to do with the body at all, nothing to do with the world, nothing to do with our thoughts, nothing to do with our practice. But the practice helps us experience this. It's not for nothing. It's not wasted, even though it's all happening in a dream, to a dream. It's still not wasted. But the silence and stillness is the point of it. So as the chanting went on, right? chanting, no Ram, no Sita, no words, no thoughts, just the silence and stillness. This is how chanting works with non-duality, with the reality of non-duality. The body goes on doing things. Should it do other things besides chanting? Yeah, sure. It cooks, makes food, goes to work, does all kinds of different things. But there are certain things in this dream that pull us away from the silence and stillness. And there are certain things that lead us to it. And that's what spiritual practice is. There are things that lead us to the silence and stillness of our true nature. And there's things that lead us away from it. Being obsessed with the news or what's going on in Facebook or what people are doing in the world, well, that leads us away from the silence and stillness, doesn't it? And this is why I'm recommending a mantra practice for many people to pull them away from the things that take them away from silence and stillness, which makes them feel uncomfortable, makes them feel miserable, makes them feel, makes them suffer. So this is an alternative to that. All spiritual practice is an alternative to the things that take you away from truth, away from silence and stillness. Everything that society offers are things to take you away from truth, to take you away from silence and stillness. It's a complete cornucopia, fun house of things that make you miserable, things that take you away from truth, away from bliss, away from love away from the peace that's always here, away from your true nature, away from truth. So the spiritual practice is a way to counteract that and to do things that will lead you back to truth. Peace, bliss, love. And don't be confused by when I use the word love. I don't mean love for something. That's a, a dualistic form of love. I mean love as love itself, which is this silence and stillness of oneness, this indivisible reality, this non-separate reality. That's love. We get a small taste of it when we have love for a person. And that's nice. That's wonderful, right? We like that. But this is far more than that. This is the essence of love. That love we have for a person is a tiny little, tiny little peek into what love really is. Love is you, your true nature, your true self. That's what love is. And when we experience that, then all the things that the body does 
our attention remains on what we are. No matter what the body does, because the body is not what we are. The mind is not what we are. The personal self is definitely not what we are. That's just an illusion. When that's gone, then the body just does what it does. The mind does what it does. It has nothing to do with us. And this is one of the things that I recommended on doing a, a mantra practice and continuing it throughout the day, 24 seven, so that you can see that the body will go on doing the things that it needs to do without you, <laughs> without your thoughts and without you. It will cook, it'll feed itself, it'll do everything that it needs to do without you. You're an illusion, you're an extra, you're an illusion within a dream, you're another dream within the dream. The separate self is just another dream within a dream. And that dream is, is what creates all your suffering. All your suffering is created by the illusion of a personal self the extra dream that's in a dream. When you let that go, there's just the dream of the body, mind, and, and duality. But it has nothing to do with you anymore. You're not the captain of the ship. <laughs> You're not the driver of the bus. It goes on without you. And it goes on perfectly well without you. As I said, I'm doing the chanting, doing all this, but, but what's happened? How is this happening? There's no driver. It's not happening. There's nobody to do anything. And yet there appears to be chanting. There appears to be all these things. And these are a practice in the dream of returning to the true nature of what we are, which is none of this. This is a dream. There's none of this. There's just this eternal bliss of being. And you can realize this because you are this. Because you are this, you can realize it. You can wake up from the dream. And this mantra practice is one of the things to help you do it. Yes, as I said before, don't be distracted by the names. Ram, Shiva, Krishna, Kali. Don't be distracted by the names and put too much importance on them. It's just the repetition of the mantra itself that's important as it quiets down the illusion and can bring you into the true nature of what you are. And then Kali, Krishna, Rama, all those stories dissolve. All those stories disappear along with the story of you, the personal self, your life and your history. That all dissolves. The dream dissolves. And what's left is truth, your true nature, the fundamental reality of all of it. Isn't that wonderful? See, it has Ra Ramana and most, you know, awakened teachers of the highest level recommend that the highest teaching of all is silence because it is the nature of reality. That's where the true teaching comes from in you or whatever teacher is teaching, if that can help bring that silence out. But I'm using a, a mantra practice and recommending a mantra practice as a preliminary step to that because it's very hard for people to experience that silence, which is why Ramana recommended self-inquiry to find, is there really somebody here? Is there really a driver of this bus, a captain of this ship? Is there anyone here? So you can realize that and experience that there isn't, because you can only experience this. It's not enough to, to believe it. It's not enough to hear it and, and believe it. It's just not nearly enough. You have to have the direct experience of it. Then it's undeniable. In other words, you have to wake up.
But even me saying this, coming from this place of silence and stillness, feels amazing, wonderful, because it's reality, it's truth, as are you. <laughs>